Hey there Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. This week we are getting super nerdy about rhyme. So here's how it's going to go. We're going to define what rhyme is, then we're going to run through the different types of rhyme and where you're going to find it, and then I'm going to tell you how to understand and use rhyme if you are analysing rhyme as part of poetry, and then I'm going to talk about using rhyme in your own writing as well. That's right, this video is for people who study English and poetry, as well as poets and writers as well. But before we go any further, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. It really helps small creators like me get found. And while we're on the subject, why don't you follow me on social media? I am at Josie Olford Poet on all the things. So let's get into it. What is rhyme? Well, the Oxford English Dictionary defines it as correspondence of sound between the endings of two or more words or metrical lines that the syllables involved carry identical vowel sounds and have, if present, identical consonants. Rhyme, strictly speaking, is regarded as extending to the last stressed vowel and any sounds following it, whether within one word or more than one. However, use of the word frequently includes different types of partial correspondence, such as I rhyme or half rhyme, are terms that are sometimes extended to include assonance and even alliteration. Rhyme is a technique often used in poetry. It adds to the music of the piece or the soundscape, and there is definitely an intellectual pleasure you get from a well-executed rhyme. However, it is also used as a mnemonic device, a way to remember things, which is why we often see it in oral storytelling traditions alongside other repetitive techniques. There are many different types of rhyme. Arguably, these are many things that are close to rhyme, but not quite. So in this next section, we're gonna run through some keywords and examples so you can understand a little bit more about how rhyme works in poetry. So the first thing I want you to understand are masculine and feminine rhymes. Masculine rhymes end on a stressed syllable and feminine rhymes end on an unstressed syllable. With feminine rhymes, the last stressed syllable and the unstressed syllables that follow it rhyme as well. An example of a masculine rhyme is the rhyming couplet at the end of Sonnet 18 by Shakespeare. So long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this and this gives life to thee. So see and thee. An example of a feminine rhyme comes in the Spice Girls to become one. Free your mind of doubt and danger, be for real, don't be a stranger. So stranger and danger, the ange is the stressed syllable and the er is the unstressed syllable and both of those rhyme in stranger and danger. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, you can watch my video on scansion, stressed and unstressed syllables here. I'll make it pop up. Okay, so the next thing you need to understand is end rhyme, internal rhyme, cross rhyme, initial rhyme and random rhyme. They all refer to where a rhyme occurs in a poetic line. End rhyme is when the rhyme happens at the end of the line. Line endings are key moments where the relationship between form and content is closest. End rhymes are important. So, for an example, in the Spice Girls wannabe, if you want my future, forget my past, if you want to get with me, better make it fast. Past and fast rhyme. Internal rhyme is when the rhyme happens in the middle of the line. For example, in Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Once upon a midnight dreary, where I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Cross rhyme is the system of an internal rhyme rhyming with the following or preceding end line. For example, in the Beatles, Hey Jude. Hey Jude, don't make it bad, take a sad song and make it better. Remember to let her into your heart, 
then you can start to make it better. Initial rhyme is when the rhyme comes at the beginning of the line. It's far less commonly used to the point where I couldn't find a good example. Hey, it's me, future editing Josie. I just realised that I missed a couple of terms to explain. So random rhyme is just when the rhyme appears randomly. There is no system of where the rhymes appears. These examples are all over the place, but frequently used in stuff like rap and hip hop, uh, where they pile on rhymes one after the other, lots and lots and lots. I think that would be considered as random rhyme. It's far more popular in contemporary poetry, less so in traditional forms, as traditional forms tend to rely on rhyme. So I just want to quickly tell you about full rhyme as we're gonna go into some stuff that isn't full rhyme. Full rhyme is a pure rhyme where everything matches and rhymes and it is a total echo of the sound. The next few examples all come under the term near rhyme, although in some American places I've heard it called slant rhyme or half rhyme or imperfect rhyme as well. Basically these almost rhyme but all in technically different ways. I said we'd get nerdy in this video so buckle up and let's get into it. First up, imperfect rhyme. The imperfect chiming of accented and unaccented syllables. Basically, this means stressed and unstressed, which would be perfect if both were accented. For example, sirens and dens, ring and striking, spot and parrot, and burn and bitten. Unstressed rhyme is when the words are multisyllabic, but only the last unstressed syllable rhymes kind of like half a feminine rhyme. These do not make a perfect rhyme. For example, matter and lover. Next up, we have half rhyme, which is feminine or three syllable rhymes in which the accented syllable rhymes, but the following one or two unaccented syllables are different. So by that, I mean that the stressed syllables rhyme, but the unstressed syllables that follow don't. For example, cover and shovel, wily and piling, or wilderness and building. Next up, we have assonance and vowel rhyme. This is probably the most common version of a near rhyme. So assonance on its own is the repetition of vowel sounds in neighboring words. For example, the fleeing Greeks received me peacefully. When assonance occurs at the end of the line, that is, when the terminal sounds are composed of the same vowel sounds plus a random mixture of consonants, it is called a vowel rhyme. This is a very popular technique in sun writing, and here is an example from Ed Sheeran's Shivers. I want to be that guy, I want to kiss your eyes, I want to drink that smile. Guys, eyes and smile. Guy, eyes and smile all have different or no consonant sounds at the end, but the vowel sound does rhyme. Next up, we have dissonant rhyme, which is when the vowel sound is the same, but the vinyl final consonants miss. But in order for it to be a dissonant rhyme instead of just a vowel rhyme, it must use phonetic consonants. For example, bite and strike both used unvoiced plosives. That is a simple breath explosions in which the vocal cords do not take part. I'm not gonna go into phonetics. I feel like that's a whole other video and this is long enough, but put simply, dissonant rhyme is when the vowel rhymes and the consonants are similar. If you're going to go for dissonant rhymes in your writing, make sure you use it as a system and not as a one-off example by itself, as it will look like a mistake. For example, this bit from Lil Nas X's Industry Baby. Need to get this album done, need a couple number ones, need a plaque on every song. So the ones are done, ones and song. Ones is a little bit cheeky here because of the S, but we have these N sounds and then we have song, which is the rhyming word here. And it is close enough to N that it is, counts as a dissonant rhyme rather than a full rhyme. Okay, so next up we have alliteration and consonant rhyme. I'm sure you know what alliteration is. It is the repetition of the same consonant sounds, usually at the beginning of words, 
Consonant rhyme is that effect when the same consonant recurs at the end of the last accented syllable in each line of rhyme pattern, but the vowel or vowels before are different. For example, gate, mat, wind, god, one, stone, plan, unknown. Consonant rhyme is when just the consonants echo each other, but without the corresponding vowel sounds. Consonants is next. Unlike consonant rhyme, which is just concerned with the consonants at the end of the sound, consonants is concerned with the consonants at the beginning of the sound as well. For example, lake, lack, lick, like, lock, luck, luke, look. All of those sounds, all of those words have different vowel sounds, but the consonants are the same. And they say this is a form of rhyme, and I guess you could argue it, but I'm not buying it personally. I think this is one of the weaker forms of rhyme. Next up, I want to tell you about repetition and rhyme reach. Obviously, one way of rhyming a word is just repeating that word again. However, rhyming a word with itself can be seen as lazy. For example, in Katy Perry's Firework, do you know that there's still a chance for you because there's a spark in you? She's rhymed you with you. However, rhyme riche is when a rhyme is rhymed with itself or with a homonym, a word pronounced the same but with a different meaning. For example, there, there and there. This is a particularly interesting technique to play with, especially in English, because we have so many homonyms. So it's definitely one to play around with, and it's one that like nonsense poets play around with quite a lot, especially in limericks. So I encourage you to have a play around with that. Okay, so first of all, in the section that I just did, I said homonyms. Um, that's not what I meant to say. I meant to say homophones. Homonyms are when two words are written the same, pronounced the same, but mean different things. So bear the noun and bear the verb as an example. But I meant homophones, which are just words that are pronounced the same, but mean different things. The other thing that I forgot to record yesterday was about I rhymes, which are visual rhymes. This is when words are spelt the same, but do not actually rhyme. So if they were written down on the page, you would think that they rhymed, but if you said them out loud, that wouldn't work. For example, rough and through. These are both spelt the same, but they are not pronounced the same. Again, this is another thing that is particularly prevalent in the English language, so can be played with, but it's worth saying that if you are a performance poet, then visual rhymes aren't going to be that helpful for you. Whereas if your poems are most encountered on the page, then maybe you can play around with visual rhyme. So next up, we have multisyllabic rhyme. That is when more than one syllable is rhymed across more, one or multiple words. This is a technique that is frequently used in rap and hip hop, as well as popular limericks from the man from Nantucket. So next up, we have multisyllabic rhyme. That is when more than one syllable is rhymed across more, one or multiple words. This is a technique that is frequently used in rap and hip hop, as well as popular limericks about the man from, man from as well as popular limericks from the man from Nantucket. In rap and hip hop, the rhymes are not often full rhymes, instead using vowel rhymes, dissonant rhymes or near rhymes, or only rhyming the stressed syllables. These are not full rhymes, but, but they still create that awesome sound patterning. Check out this example from Loyal Khanna's Ain't Nothing Changed. Trust I'm all alone, panicking to play it safe, this talk of paper chase is forcing me to stay awake, living this layer cake where others will say you're straight, say they got my back, that they're praying I'ma pave the way, like it's the great escape. So now, I just want to run through some final terms that are useful to know. If a poem rhymes in a particular pattern, this is what we call a rhyme scheme. And when marking a poem's rhyme scheme, we mark its algebra. By that I mean we use letters. 
Each different rhyming sound is marked by a progressing letter of the alphabet. For example, a traditional Shakespearean sonnet has the rhyme scheme A B A B C D C D E F E F G G. So for this next section, I'm just going to give you some tips on how you can use this knowledge when analysing poetry. Rhyme contributes to the overall soundscape of the poem. Rhyme highlights words and brings them together, drawing attention to the relationship between terms. Whether a poem sticks to a traditional form or chooses a random rhyme scheme, the choices to, related to rhyme can create interesting effects that contribute to the poem's overall meaning. I want you, when you're analysing your next poem, to ask these questions. What mood or tone do the rhyme or soundscapes create? Does this use traditional forms? Does it stick to the form or subvert it? What images and words are linked through rhyme? And finally, what effect does all of this have on the meaning of the poem? Next up, I'm gonna give you some tips about how to use rhyme in your writing. Quick disclaimer, I'm not much of a rhymer, so I'm gonna tell you the techniques that I use and send you to some places that you might find useful. When writing in form or a set rhyme scheme, I include rhyming words as part of my rhymed maps and planning stages. See any of my how to write a poem videos. If I'm not writing in a traditional form, then rhyme normally happens fairly randomly. I don't often write with rhyme in mind, but I do think about sound and sound patterning when writing. Think about how vowel sounds and consonants flow together. So some resources. Rhymezone.com is your friend. It also helps find near rhymes too. Doppel Rhyme or Double Rhyme is an app and a website. It's also good if you're looking for multi-rhymes. My penultimate piece of advice is to read poetry and listen to music. It's a well-known thing that consuming art informs your creative process. I especially recommend listening to rap and hip hop as these guys really are out there smashing it. My final piece of advice is to practice, practice, practice. As with any tool, you need to use it and keep it sharp and exercise it. So when you're, if you want to be better at rhyming, you need to actually rhyme to get better. And that's advice I should probably follow myself as well. So that's it for this week's video on rhyme. I hope you found it useful. Please comment with your favourite rhymes down below. And if you have any questions, I will answer them down there. Please like this video, subscribe and turn on notifications. It really helps small creators like me get found. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I am at Josie Olford Poet on all the things. You can support the channel by joining me on Patreon. Um, we have monthly writing workshops and badges and I ask them questions on what videos I should do next so head over there or you can buy me a coffee the links to do all of that are in the description down below thanks so much for watching I'll see you all next week bye